In this video I want to show you how to mount the defibrillator platform to the stretcher and I want to go over some of the important features of this device and how to do it uh, properly so that all the equipment is uh, fastened uh, securely and you're not going to have damage to the equipment or any injury to your patient, right? So this is the manufacturer's guidelines of this device uh, and it's called the defibrillator platform, some people call it the, the tray and uh, what you're going to see, right, is this is how it comes in a folded position and when you unfold it, right, this is how it looks. This is the actual uh, device that I'm having on the stretcher, right? A uh, couple of very important features that I want to talk about is, is this. Uh, when we're going to secure it, right, the, this IV pole has to be uh, brought up, right? You cannot secure this device with a IV pole laying down like this. So we'll show you step by step how to do this. Another important feature, right, we have an electric uh, um, uh, stretcher, right? And when you have the electric stretcher, the 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 hooks of this device are going to be essentially going underneath this part right here, right? So we'll show you how to mount it, right? And the hooks is what actually secures this uh, securely in place. Uh, one other important feature that you definitely need to uh, take into account is this device is rated for 30 pounds or 13.6 kilograms. And if you ever lost these instructions, right, you could look at the actual device. Uh, you could see the striker here, right? And it tells you, right, it's 30 pounds and 13.6 kilograms. So that's the max loadout on this device. The monitor that we employ here is called the LifePack 15. And it, ha it houses, right, uh, all the uh, leads, all the cables, BP cough, right? It has uh, hemodynamic monitoring uh, wiring, right? It has the pads. In addition to, right, we also have some stuff like your electrodes in here, right? Besides that, in the back, we house some accessory things like the pull socks, right? Uh, and we have uh, spears, right, for your entitled CO2 and so forth, right? This entire thing with this uh, pocket assembly that I'm holding in my hand, we placed it on a, on a, in a scale in the hospital, and it essentially weighted uh, 27 and a half pounds. So this entire device is 27 and a half pounds, depending on how much stuff you got stuffed in there, right? So and this uh, defibrillator uh, platform is rated for 30 uh, pounds. So you're pretty much almost at the max loadout. The only thing that I will show you uh, to place on it will be the suction unit in case, uh, right, uh, you need to have a, a suction for patients who have uh, chest tubes, right? So now I'll show you how to mount it uh, and, uh, you know, how to make sure it's secure we're also going to show you how to mount the the defibrillator on it right so i'm going to give this to my partner all right so he's got the device right so i moved the sheet away so you can see the clear assembly right so the first thing i said is you need to make sure your id pole is upright position so once the id pole is up this is how it comes right uh in a storage position i'm going to first uh, open this up and I'm going to point your attention to two different types of legs that it has, right? You have these legs and these legs. And the way we're actually positioning it is as follows. These uh, legs, right, that, that basically have uh, like a, dub, a double connection, that's going to be towards the foot end of the stretcher. And these legs are going to be towards the head end of the stretcher, right? So well, let me just step back so you guys can see. This is how the assembly will be mounted. When are you actually going to be mounting this is first the patient is going to be transferred to the stretcher initially, right? Once the patient is on the stretcher, I usually take all the cables that are running from my LifePack 15. I have them to the side. I disconnect them from the monitor. And then when the patient, patient is now on my stretcher, I basically keep all those cables together right, by the patient's legs. So once the patient is securely placed on the stretcher, now we're going to mount this. So once more, one more time. These are towards the foot end, these are towards the head end, and then the hooks are gonna go under under carriage, right? Under the cut, and we'll show you how to do it. Another very, very important feature, you see these securing straps. Ideally, you wanna have four. They mount all your equipment. And this is the manufacturer's guidelines. They actually state you must use the provided straps in order to secure your equipment, right? So uh, if you have four, right, uh, you could have horizontal, right? And you have vertical uh, ways of securing. So you see all these uh, uh, openings here, right? This is how you run your straps, right? So now that I have it here, I'm gonna do one side at a time. So I mount this leg, right? And then I wanna make sure this leg is here. So they fit snugly here. The next thing I wanna sit is the other legs.
right? So now you see that both legs are secure, right? And you want to make sure they're flush, right? So it looks flush to me. The next thing I'm going to do is these hooks. These hooks are going to go under the, the carriage, right? And you notice you have these belts that allow adjustments. So you could pull on these belts to allow movement. So we'll see if we have enough. Yeah, so, so this one is how it comes here. Then you find your red tab and you're going to move it all the way up until you hear an audible click. When you have an audible click, you know this device is engaged. Same thing on this side, so come over here, see if it's clear. So the hook is going to go under, under carriage. If you need to make your adjustments, this is the straps you're going to pull up and down, right, to make sure you have a snug fit. So right now I am under, and then I'm going to find this red tab. I want to make sure I have, right, the audible click. And then before you start putting your equipment, you just want to make sure it's secured nice and snug, right? Everything looks good. So now I'm going to show you how to I will mount the Lifebike 15 to open these straps up. Right. I usually have this guy facing here, right? Why, why do I have it facing here as opposed to facing it like this? Is that I'm going to be usually sitting by the patient's side, right? And I want to see the readouts. If you put it like this, you're not going to be able to have a good clean readout, right? So this is how my monitor will be housed. And I usually run these under. make sure they're tight and then the other side I run this under and then what I want to make sure if you actually you know come up over here so uh, they see the front of this screen you want to make sure right you have good vis visibility so if I'm sitting here right and I'm looking at the patient I also want to see a clear-cut right readouts, and I have access to all the controls. So this is one one assembly. Another way you could uh, put this on, if you had, uh, let's say, you wanted to put a suction unit on this, right? If the patient has, let's say, chest tubes that need suction, what you're going to do is this. This would be a second configuration for this. So I'd probably place my monitor like this, right? And this would be my suction unit. The suction unit will be placed right here. Right? And usually you'll be connecting your chest tubes, right, that need uh, the suction up until you get them to the ankles, right? So this will be here. I will run my straps under, right, and I will run my other strap under. The, the downside to this is you have, you have to basically have everything clear here because you're going to have to observe your monitor. I would not exceed, uh, you know, the storage by much uh, more than this. Uh, why? Because we said 30 pounds is the max weight. Uh, what else I want to say is that uh, uh, some, I've seen uh, you know, somebody uh, mounting your ventilator uh, NO2 here. I would say this is not the best spot. I usually like my uh, O2 on ventilator in the back of the stretcher. I'll do another video showing how I like to do that. Right? And uh, I'm going to re-secure this motor in a standard configuration like I had prior. And I'm going to take this uh, stretcher out so that you can see the full assembly. Right? So I'll take this off. Put it back how it was. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it over, I'm running it actually under this handle. Uh, and the reason for that is I want to make sure, right, all of this is secure. I always double check, right, that we've cinched everything down, right? So now everything looks good. I'm going to take the stretcher out just to show you how uh, it's, it's housed, right? So, as we said, right, uh, these legs are towards the foot end, right, these legs are towards the head end, the, the hook is goes under the undercarriage and then you have secure fit, fit here, right. So what I was saying is, once it's secure, you hear this audible click, 
once you hear the audible click it means you're you're good if you need to adjust your straps right this is the strap you're going to be pulling up or down depending on the need right uh, and so this goes under here right so this is how we're, we would transport very important right uh, the pole must be brought out prior to, to secure it because you see right if the pole is here it will be in the way of proper securement right this is how we transport the patient uh, and utilize this.